there are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O oh God. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O oh Lord, make me lie down. Word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Loving God, may these words that come forth from my lips and may the thoughts and the meditations and the hearts of everyone present this morning be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. This is the week, the weekend, the few days, time of year that we have narrowed down as sort of a, an a Earth Day awareness, awareness of our Earth and the environment and the justice of our treatment of the Earth. Our prayer of confession is from the Native American tradition calling us to look for God's mystery hidden in every leaf and rock. Our final prayer of hope will also come from the Native American tradition, seeking our understanding of God's presence with us and providing us hope along the way. I talked to Bud this morning about yesterday's events in Centennial Park, Earth Day celebration in Centennial Park, in 80 or 90 booths and tents set up and people celebrating the earth. And I wonder, I wonder at all of the beauty in the world, Niagara Falls or Fall Creek Falls, of the Grand Canyon, of the great deserts and the great mountain peaks and the great oceans, and how to stand and look from a mountain top just takes your breath away to stand and gaze across the Atlantic or the Pacific Ocean and to be overwhelmed by the magnitude of this world and cognizant of just how tiny I am. Sands of grain in many ways. I want to ask you to listen to my Saturday night radio show just bask in this beautiful diatribe I'm about to go on. Well, it's been a quiet week here in Lake Wobegon. All the women are beautiful. All the men are strong. And all the children are above average. There is peace around the globe. And the lion is lying down with the lamb. Churches are growing. Mosques are growing. Temples are growing. High quality, affordable health care is available to everyone. Housing is available to anyone who needs it. The economy is strong, so strong that the distributions of goods is just right. Some people have quite a bit, but not too much. Some people don't have a whole lot, but they have enough. Needs are met around the globe. All around the world, children are playing without fear. Choirs are singing, and all of God's children are fine. The globe has stopped warming. The air is clean. The water is safe to drink anywhere in the world. The oceans are not rising. And the disappearance of species, everywhere on earth it's stopped. All life is thriving. 
flowers and trees and grasses and sedges and mosses and lichens and liverworts and salamanders and newts and fishes of the sea. All are thriving. Nations are sharing their wisdom and their resources with each other for the good of all. Military industrial complexes around the world have been transformed into planet care industries, planet care centers, teaching and learning the art and practice of care for the earth. Soldiers are transformed into compassionate caregivers for the earth. New forms of energy captured from the sun and the wind are bringing economic stability to the vast areas of every continent. The construction of their infrastructure and the delivery systems for clean and renewable energy is what's been transformed by the investment of all of the human energy that has been going into the military industrial complex for the past 60 years. The centers of exploration and science and study, NASA, the peer-reviewed studies of scientists all around the world are deeply respected and they're given priority in determining the future of the world for our grandchildren and beyond. Drug use is almost non-existent. Police departments are becoming more like community support centers. Black and white and yellow and brown and male and female and straight and gay. All of God's children are loving each other, compassionately caring for one another. All of God's children are loving each other, compassionately caring for one another. I just want all of those things just to wash over you. Let's swim in those waters for a little while. Everything no threat to the planet anymore. There's no strife between religions or politics or nations or races or sexualities. We're swimming in the waters of harmony globally. The air is good. The plants are loving it. The animals are loving it. Sit for a moment and let that wash over you. <coughs> But we struggle to find one word in the newspaper 
one word in the news reports on TV about our elected representatives working for the good of all people. Ad hominem attacks against Barack Obama. He's a Muslim. He's not an American. I was in Scott County yesterday, and Morgan County, and Fentress County, and I was driving around with my dentist friend and the executive director of the Nashville Interfaith Dental, Dental uh, Program that we started 21 years ago. We were looking for a new site to put a new clinic in a county where there's only three dentists. In the three county area, there's only four dentists. And we were looking for a spot. Our trailer had a blowout and we lost the tire on one of our, on the trailer. We had to unhitch it, leave it on the side of the road, and keep going and looking. And then we finally go into a Walmart to buy a new tire and go back and fix the trailer and come home last night. What was supposed to be about a four or five hour trip for me ended up all day yesterday in, in East Tennessee. We ended up in a Walmart parking lot looking for the tire and the pickup truck was parked right next to us. On the tailgate of the pickup truck were written these words, not, they were just painted on there. Get rid of all the Muslims and Obama too. Take them out. I looked at the young man. There was a young guy sitting in the driver's seat. He was probably 18 or 19 years old. He had on a ball cap with the Confederate stars and bars on the front of it. He had on a sleeveless t-shirt and he had a cigarette just dangling from his lip. And I started, found myself just wondering, how has the world been named into this young man's consciousness? How has he been raised? What teachers and what parents have influenced him to somehow believe that all Muslims are evil and that Obama should be taken out? What world is it that he's been raised in to where he finds it necessary to make that kind of a proclamation on the tailgate of his truck? I really wonder about that. Our state legislators have failed in their leadership to bring affordable health care to the whole state. I led a delegation of six people to meet with our Speaker of the House on Wednesday and shared the concern that 280,000 people in Tennessee will not be covered in insurance for the next two years. And the response was, well, we don't really know what we're going to do. But when a Republican wins the White House in two years, we'll get a block grant and do something with that. Two people die every day in the United States from not having insurance coverage. Someone will die in Tennessee in the next two years because they don't have insurance coverage. One death is too many. Our legislators act as if they have no moral or righteous consciousness of time. They act simply on the principles of junior high school pre-adolescents who want to be popular and maximize their power in the social context they find themselves in. 280,000 Tennesseans not covered with insurance. We have privileged, powerful people who are acting on principles and power structures because of the world that has been named into their consciousness, not that, not that much in a different way than the young man sitting in the truck at the Walmart. Grab the power, be popular, maintain the power. If some people have to die along the way or not get insurance along the way, so be it. All you want to do is be a winner. The earth is warming. The earth is warming and the sea levels are rising and coal is not now nor has it ever been clean and it will not be clean. Fracking as an alternative is an alternative, but it's a deadly alternative and carbon and methane outputs from fracking will not cease the move to continuing the pumping of carbon into the atmosphere. 99 
percent of the world's best scientists affirm this truth. The other one percent are paid great sums of money to dispute it. Every day of the year, we now know that we lose another species on this planet. Every day of the year, another animal, another plant will never again exist in the world. The extinction rates in the last 100 years have increased exponentially. The world that our grandchildren and beyond will inherit is in dire jeopardy. They will never see some of the animals or plants that people have seen, that you have seen, that I have seen. Foreign relations and diplomacy has developed into pretty much hawks dominating the conversation and the dialogue, and the doves taking a back seat. A negotiated agreement with Iran seeking the accountability and progressive movement to de-escalate the nuclear threat has been thrashed by the hawks who want only to bomb and destroy a whole nation. Because they're Muslim, because they're different, because they said bad things about us in the past. We have all these wonderful weapons, why don't we use them? We can go take them out. We can bomb them off the face of the earth. Senators and congressmen have attacked a peace negotiation, an agreement, arguing in favor for military deadly strategies instead. The most popular drug in Nashville today, insidious drug to hit the streets of Nashville, is now heroin. It's become affordable and it's become abundant. And it's not just in the poor sections of Davidson County, but you can find heroin use in Brentwood and Forest Hills and yes, even in Oak Hill. <coughs> Doctors and dentists around the city have said they are seeing more and more people who admit to the use of heroin. I'm sharing these things with you because two weeks ago we said Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And I want us to recover the meaning of that in a world that has really, really got problems, challenges. These words have been sung and shouted around the globe in the last two weeks. And every ounce of my being believes in the fundamental meaning found within those words, Christ is risen. God has offered us a way to be reconciled to God, to each other, to the earth. Love is alive. I believe that. Love can be shared. Truth can be told. People have to start saying the truth and speaking the truth so that all might be saved. Salvation can be realized through our surrender to the basic knowledge that all of our destinies, our destiny is goodness. Our inclination is evil. Our destiny is goodness. Our inclination is evil. The stories that have shaped us from our childhood, from our neighborhood, from our race, from our politics, from our sexuality, those things continue to bend us away from the arc of the universe. The psalmist this morning in Psalm 4 is speaking to me this week, and I hope speaking to you as well. Psalm 4 is a lament from an individual calling upon God to deliver him from his enemies, from his travails, from his challenges. God, remember, 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 and come and save. He's repeating the phrases that reaffirm this trust in a God who has put joy in his heart before. God, you're the one who put joy in my heart. God has lifted up God's countenance upon him before. And he says, people say, oh, that we might see some good. That first sort of utopian, the lion laying down with the land that I was talking about at the beginning, and then what's really happening in the world and the world you and I live in. 
think more than one of us will say, oh, that I just might see some good this week. That I might see somebody do some good this week. That I might do some good this week. He reaffirms his belief that his God will not let him down. God will carry him through the rough places. Some say that this psalm was actually written in the midst of a drought and an economic, economic downturn. The psalmist was praying for rain and comfort in really, really tough times, hard times. And reaffirming his faith along the way. Whatever need was unmet, this psalmist was clinging to the hope that God would not leave him to face his perils alone. In peace, in peace, he says in this lament, this psalm, singing it out. In peace, I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Oh, to be able to lie down at night and fall asleep, fast asleep with no words. I have trouble sometimes, I don't know if you do, but laying my head down on the pillow, thoughts run this way and that. This song reminds me to place my troubles and place my worries in the hands of a God who has said, I am not going to leave you alone. I will carry you. Rest now, my child. Rest, my daughter. Rest, my son. To be able to rest not only my legs and my back, but to rest my mind and my heart. To rest, the to rest in the assurance that God has and will deliver us. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., you all are aware, he said, The arc of the universe is long, but it bends toward justice. Mahatma Gandhi reminded us that when faced with tremendous challenges and what happens, what appears to be losing causes for, in the history of humankind, when faced with tremendous challenges and what appears to be a losing cause, he recalls that ultimately good has triumphed over evil. It may take a hundred years, it may take a thousand years, but to live in service to the truth, to what's right, to live in service to the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Moses and Jesus, to live, to live in faith with that God who allows us to sleep, the good sleep. That's to participate in bending the ark of the universe toward Jesus. The psalmist today is giving us words that provide us a cool sip for parched souls. To see some good in the world. To see some good in the world. It's a desire for every one of us. There are good people. There is good in the world. What we have to do as ambassadors of love and peace and justice in this world is to highlight those, to tell those stories, to have the narrative that our children here be something other than negative, separatists, and exclusion and exclusive. But to tell them the story of love, the God that gives us sleep, good sleep, rest, and fear, or, or the elimination of our fears. We do know, I think, in this church, and you, I can look at you here in these pews. We know and we have participated ourselves in the building of relationships that restore peace between neighbors, between different denominations, between religions. This church has had outreach to this community for decades, loving one another. We have had interfaith participation in our room in the end ministry. Jews and Christians working together, feeding the homeless. We have reached out to those who are economically insecure and helped them in many ways. You, you dear members of Glendale, have embraced the challenge and you know that our journey is not complete unless we are loving our neighbors. You know that. God is with us. God is the one who will ultimately allow us to lie down at night sleep with good sleep. To 
to rock our souls in the bosom of Abraham. Love one another, my friends. Love one another with the full confidence in the God who knows our pain and our suffering before we even express it. Love one another with the full confidence in the God who walks with us and moves us ever closer to that feast on the mountainside where everyone takes their seat. Love one another and know that within your proclamation that Christ is risen, in your proclamation that Christ is risen, we find the foundation of hope for the world. Hope for all the children yet to come, even to the seventh generation. don't mind, I'd like to read Psalm 4 to you again before we take up the offering. Listen to it one more time. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in our heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down and sleep. Let it be so. Amen. 